up, everyone? I'm your female otaku, and I'm here to review episode 3 of Ruby, volume 3. And I've gotta give some mad props to Vic Mignogna. His voice for Crow sounds so good. This is probably some of his best work. I'm not gonna lie. I love it. He is so good. Really good as Crow, okay? Now, Crow, he's probably like my new favorite character now, okay? This dude is awesome, yo! I love his attitude, man, okay? And now, he's, and apparently he's always drunk, so this is just gonna be even more amazing, okay? Just seeing Crow just re regularly talk is gonna be hilarious. Him fighting is just gonna be so cool. I, I love this guy, man. My new favorite character is Crow. And props to you, Vic Mignogna. I'm loving your work on this guy, man, okay? All right, so we meet Weiss's sister. You see, last week I actually binged watch uh, all of Ruby for the second time because I, I watched Ruby, you know, like last year and I saw season two when it was airing last year and stuff like that, but my sister wanted to get into it, so I decided to binge watch it with her and I rewatched everything all over again and stuff and it was fun. And I remembered Weiss mentioning about her sister named Winter and what do you know, we actually meet her within this episode, okay? And I've gotta say, I... Not a fan of Winter, no. She's pretty annoying and one of those stereotypical characters where you have to be like this, okay? Yes, sir. How are your duties doing? And, you know, stuff like that, okay? Uh, her character is nothing original and... Mm, yeah, I don't like her. Okay, so... I gotta give mad props to Rooster Teeth for this episode's animation. It has changed so much because like, like I just told you, okay, I, I recently binge watched the entire series all over again, okay? And so how it is right now to, from what it was in season one and even in season two, and season two animation was pretty good, but it's just this t episode, this very episode, the movements were just so fluid and it wasn't just the action scenes this time even if the characters were you know talking around they had the their mouths enunciate the words and it was just so good and how they were moving everything was smooth oh, I loved it I loved it like props rooster teeth great great job <laughs> all right so I want to discuss something and it's something that's been on my mind for such a long time time. So this has been brought up a couple of times throughout Ruby for I think since season two, okay, is that we all know that a battle or a war, something is coming, but we don't know what it is, okay? Blake mentioned it back over in season two, which was why she went a little crazy for a little bit and wouldn't rest, okay? We had, um... The headmaster today, he mentioned, he was all like, okay, well, with an army that big, what are we fighting? Okay? And then even Torchwick, I remember, he said, and I believe season two, he was all like, hey, it would be nice to be informed on what the plan is. So... It's being brought up more and more, so I believe we're finally going to find out very soon on what White Fang is planning. What is going on? What are they trying to do? What is their goal, okay? I've been wanting this question to be answered for the longest time, and I think we're finally going to get that answer soon enough. And I cannot wait to see this battle between, um, dang it, uh, Mercury, the green-haired girl, and the girl with the suitcase from the other team. I don't remember what the other team is called, but I know one of the members on that team is the bunny faunus girl, okay? That girl with the suitcase. I remember seeing her in the finale episode of Volume 2. Yo, it's gonna be so cool. I can't wait. I can't wait. This, oh man, <laughs> hype. I am hyped up right now. Let's go. Give me episode four. <laughs> okay, all right. So, catch you tomorrow as a review, Mr. Osamatsu. I'm your female otaku. Sayonara.